In this lesson, we'll cover fuel management, autopilot operation, and navigation. The mission is currently paused. First, we'll talk about fuel management. Your F-15C can carry up to 13,455 pounds of fuel internally, and you can supplement that with up to three jettisonable external tanks that carry just over 4,000 pounds of fuel each, which allows you to almost double your fuel to about 26,000 pounds total. Press the spacebar to continue. Look over at the highlighted screen. This is the Multipurpose Color Display, or MPCD. Press the spacebar to continue. The top line of the MPCD will tell you whether you're carrying external tanks. The three words in this line correspond to the left wing, center, and right wing stations, and will read pylon if that station is empty, or fuel if that station is carrying a fuel tank. In our case, our wing stations are empty, and we're carrying a center line fuel tank. Press the spacebar to continue. Now, look over at the fuel quantity indicator on the right of the instrument panel. The dial shows internal fuel. The carrot at 3,000 pounds is the bingo fuel indicator, which means that you've got about enough fuel to return home. It's set at 3,000 pounds by default, which is a reasonable rule of thumb. You can adjust it for your particular flight plan if you'd like by pressing left control D and left alt D. Typically, you would set this during your startup procedure. When you reach bingo fuel, bingo fuel will light up on the caution lights panel on the right of the instrument panel, and a bingo fuel voice warning will sound. Also, when you're down to about 1,500 pounds, a fuel low light will illuminate. Under the dial is a readout of the total fuel, including external tanks. The two lower counters marked left and right allow you to monitor individual fuel tanks. The selector knob below the counters allows you to choose which tanks to monitor, and the current fuel levels of the selected tanks are shown by the two counters. Press left shift D a few times to switch the selector knob to EXT CTR so you can read the remaining fuel in the external centerline tank. Then press the spacebar to continue. Next, look at the engine fuel flow indicators which show how much fuel each engine is using in pounds per hour. Fuel flow will increase as you increase throttle, particularly in afterburner, and decrease as you gain altitude. Because fuel flow decreases with altitude, it's generally desirable to cruise at higher altitudes, 30,000 feet or so, for better fuel efficiency. Push the throttle into full afterburner and watch how the fuel flow changes. Then, throttle back to about half throttle. You can calculate the amount of time you have left in the air at current conditions by dividing the total fuel remaining by the sum of the fuel flow of both engines. Press the spacebar to continue. Next, we'll discuss the autopilot. The F-15C has two autopilot modes, attitude and altitude hold. Attitude hold will hold the current attitude, that is, the orientation of the aircraft, as long as the pitch attitude is within plus or minus 45 degrees, and the roll attitude is within plus or minus 60 degrees, and the G-loading is between 0G and plus 4G. As long as you stay within these limits, you can adjust the attitude with the stick with autopilot engaged. When you release the stick, the new attitude will be held. Attitude hold alone is useful, for example, during a long climb. However, when attitude hold is engaged, the second mode, altitude hold, can also be engaged as long as the climb or descent rate is less than 2,000 feet per minute. If you exceed any of these limits, the respective autopilot mode will automatically disengage. The autopilot makes it easy to, for example, travel in a straight line if engaged in level flight, or to orbit at a given altitude if both modes are engaged while in the bank. Press the spacebar to continue. The autopilot modes are engaged by the highlighted switches in the left console. When these switches are switched forward, the respective autopilot mode is activated. Next, I'll unpause the mission. When I do, keep the aircraft level and the velocity vector on the horizon. Press the spacebar to continue. Once you're flying straight and level, press A to engage the attitude hold. Next, press H to engage altitude hold. Pressing A or H again will disengage autopilot, but leave them engaged for now. Adjust the throttle to stay around 300 knots. Press the spacebar to continue. Next, we'll discuss navigation and waypoints. Waypoints are preset navigation points automatically entered into the aircraft's navigation computer. Generally, you will be following a flight plan that consists of a number of flight plan waypoints, one of which will be selected as the current waypoint. We're currently in navigation mode, indicated by the lit up ADI button in the center of the instrument panel. In navigation mode, information about the current waypoint is displayed on the HUD. We'll describe that first. Press the spacebar to continue. Look at the data block in the bottom right of the HUD. The first line, 1 nav, means you're currently navigating towards waypoint 1. Waypoint 0 is the starting location of your flight, and waypoint 1 is the first waypoint after that. The second line is the distance to the current waypoint in nautical miles. 
The third line is a projected flight time to the waypoint. You can switch to the previous and next waypoint by pressing left shift back quote and left control back quote. When you reach a waypoint, the next waypoint will be automatically selected. Go ahead and press left control back quote to select waypoint two. The small vertical line on the bottom of the heading scale at the top of the HUD is the assigned heading mark. This indicates the direction of the current waypoint. The vertical line in the middle of the HUD is the bank steering index. If you align your velocity vector with this, you will reach the current waypoint along the course line, which is the straight line from the previous waypoint to the current waypoint. Sometimes the course line will not be too important and you can fly directly to the desired waypoint. You will want to stick to the assigned course if, for example, flying directly to the desired waypoint will cause you to overfly enemy territory or air defense installations. Press the spacebar to continue. Now look down at your HSI, or Horizontal Situation Indicator, which is highlighted. This instrument shows a top-down view of your aircraft superimposed on the compass. The number in the top left corner, labeled miles, is the distance to the current waypoint. The top right number, labeled course, is the course direction. This is the heading along the course line from the previous waypoint to the current waypoint. This will be your heading if you are flying towards the current waypoint along the course line. The course direction is also indicated graphically on the rim of the compass by the symbol that looks like a dagger. The small triangle on the outer rim of the compass is the bearing pointer, which indicates the heading to the current waypoint. This is the same as the assigned heading mark on the heading tape at the top of the HUD. The long straight line inside the compass is the course deviation indicator, which indicates the angle between the direct path to the current waypoint and the course line. Each dot represents five degrees. If the line is to the left of center, it means the course line is off to your left. The diagram of the course line and course deviation is given in your briefing. You can press left alt B if you want to pull that up now. Now, press left shift back quote to select the previous waypoint, waypoint 1, and watch how the HSI changes. Now press left control back quote to select waypoint 2 again. Press left control back quote again to select waypoint 3. Then press A to disengage your autopilot and turn to fly to waypoint 3. You can navigate there directly by following the assigned heading mark on the heading scale at the top of the HUD, or the triangle indicator on the rim of the HSI. You can also follow the course line from waypoint 2 to waypoint 3 if you wish. Feel free to throttle up if you want to get there sooner.
Great job. This concludes this lesson. You can keep flying or press escape to end the lesson. <laughs>